Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're going to take a look at an important law of respiratory physiology called Henry's Law. Now, we've spoken about Boyle's Law in a previous video. We've spoken about Dalton's Law in a previous video. Now it's time to talk about Henry's Law. Now, Henry's Law states that the amount of dissolved gas in a liquid is proportional to its partial pressure above the liquid. So first thing is partial pressure. We spoke about partial pressures when we looked at Dalton's Law. But just to reiterate, remember that if we take all of the atmosphere around us, it is exerting a particular pressure on us. Now that pressure that all the gas together is exerting on us at what we call sea level ends up being 760 millimeters of mercury worth of pressure. And Dalton's law states that this pressure is simply a sum of all the individual gases. And we know that there's nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and other trace gases. If we just focus on oxygen and carbon dioxide, for example, in this video, we know that oxygen, O2, right? Oxygen makes up 20.9% of all the gases in the atmosphere around us. And carbon dioxide makes up 0.04% of all the gases in the atmosphere around us. Now, if we take 20.9% of 760, we end up getting 159 millimeters of mercury. So that means the partial pressure of oxygen in our atmosphere is 159. That's what partial pressure is. And sometimes you'll see it written with a P in front. So you might see PO2, that's saying the partial pressure of oxygen, at least in our atmosphere, is 159 millimeters of mercury. What's the partial pressure of carbon dioxide? Well, 0.04% of 760 ends up being 0.3 millimeters of mercury. And that's the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. All right, now let's take a look at Henry's law, which is stating the amount of dissolved gas in a liquid is proportional to its partial pressure above the liquid. liquid. So we need to draw a container that's got liquid in it. Now let's give an example here where we've got the atmosphere. So we know now what the concentration or the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is outside. So let's say, let's use another pen. Let's say the PCO2 in the atmosphere is 0.3 millimeters of mercury. Let's say in here, in the liquid, the PCO2 is 45 millimeters of mercury. Now this is where partial pressure, Henry's law, all comes into play. Gases will only move down their own pressure gradient. Gases will always move from a high pressure to a low. I always say to my students, think of a slide. You've got a slide where it's up the top and down the bottom and you've got this nice ladder that they need to climb up. If you've got carbon dioxide sitting at the top of the ladder, it costs it no energy just to let go and slide down from where it's of a high pressure to down where it's of a low pressure. Or if you watch the news and you watch the weather and they say, oh, a high pressure system is moving in, high pressures always go to low pressures because it costs no energy and it wants to equilibrate. It wants to balance things out. So keep that in mind. So if we take a look at this now and apply Henry's law of partial pressures, knowing gases go from high to low, in what direction is this gas going to move? It's going to move from its highest pressure inside the liquid to its lowest pressure outside the liquid. So the gas will diffuse out, right? That is Henry's law in action, looking at the partial pressures. What if we take oxygen, for example? So let's say we've got the partial pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere is 159. millimeters of mercury. And let's say the partial pressure of oxygen in this liquid here, the PO2, is equal to 100 millimeters of mercury. Which one has the highest partial pressure? Outside here. So oxygen moves down. Again, it's concentration gradient or it's pressure gradient. It's partial pressure gradient to apply Henry's law. Have a look what's happening here. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide does not affect the diffusion of oxygen. And the partial pressure of oxygen does not affect the diffusion of carbon dioxide. And in this scenario, they're diffusing in opposing directions. Does this remind you of anything? It should hopefully remind you of 
and alveoli and the blood moving past. We've taken a breath in, we're gonna have oxygen in here and we want that oxygen to diffuse into the blood. So it must have a higher partial pressure in the alveoli than it does in the blood so that it can go down its pressure gradient. What about carbon dioxide? We've just produced that in the body, so it's coming past. We want that carbon dioxide to go from the blood into the alveoli so we can breathe it out. So the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood must be higher than the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveoli. And again, it can diffuse out. This is Henry's law in action. It's important. So the water here is synonymous with the respiratory membrane, that of the alveoli and the bloodstream. Now, think of the application of this in different contexts. You go deep diving, the partial pressure changes because the atmospheric pressure becomes greater. So instead of it being 760 millimeters of mercury, it could be double that. That means the partial pressure will double. That means, for example, more gases will diffuse across a membrane, right? So think about nitrogen. Nitrogen is just this inert gas which does diffuse across, but we don't utilize it, so it's not a problem. But it's not a problem at one atmosphere. When that increases and that nitrogen moves in, it can then form these bubbles. And think about it, you go deep diving, the pressure is greater and greater and greater and greater. And all this nitrogen gets pushed into the bloodstream because instead of nitrogen, which is out here, so the partial pressure of nitrogen being around about 597 millimeters of mercury going and then diffusing down its pressure gradient into the blood, it doubles. So more nitrogen goes into the blood. Now, this is when you're deep diving. What happens when you want to go back to the surface? The pressure slowly drops. This nitrogen then wants to go out again. And it's like opening the bottle of a soda can. Psh, psh, all those bubbles are formed because you're changing the partial pressures between the environments. And that's when we've got those nitrogen bubbles that can be forming. So again, it's all important when it comes to the context of the atmospheric pressure. But again, Henry's law needs to be applied. Think of what is the partial pressure. Hopefully that makes sense.